The main use for latches is to make registers. And the main use for registers is to create pipelines. This is our first example of a pipeline. We have combinational circuits and these combinational circuits are separated by registers. We represent registers as these small squares and we have uh, one, two, three, four, five combinational circuits. Two adders, these are two adders, a multiplier, an absolute circuit that takes the absolute value of its input and a square circuit that takes the square value of its input. So the inputs and the outputs of each combinational circuit have a register. When we draw a register here, this does not mean that it is a single bit register. It means that it is a multi-bit register, uh, potentially. So it's uh, as many bits as there are input bits to the, to the, uh, to the combinational block, there will be registers uh, registering all these bits in parallel with each other. So this is uh, a wide bus, not a single bit bus, and it's uh, going into a register that consists of multiple single bit registers in parallel, each of which is similar to either the static re register or the dynamic register we looked at in uh, previous videos. What we want to do here is we want to examine uh, at every clock cycle. So the first column in this table is the number of the clock cycle. So we are going to uh, consider the outputs uh, from clock cycle number zero, which is the beginning of operation, uh, all the way down to actually more than cycle six, uh, cycle seven, eight, and nine potentially as well. And we want to consider what the values of the nodes shown in the table are for each of these cycles. So we want to examine the value of nodes A, B, C, and D. These are the inputs to the uh, overall circuit. And uh, we want to count in cycles uh, what the values will be at nodes add one, add two, M1, EPS1, and square one. So we want to see when we see outputs and when we see specific outputs. So at every clock cycle, on every clock edge, data will cross all the registers simultaneously. What this means or what this implies is that we are using the same clock for all the registers. This is what we call a synchronous pipeline. Synchronicity here indicates that all registers use the same clock. So we call it a synchronous circuit. Synchronous circuit, not an asynchronous circuit. Synchronous circuit. So um, on clock edge zero, on the clock cycle zero, this represents our very first uh, clock cycle. We don't know the contents of add one, add two, m1, apps one or square one, they have some initial value, we don't know it yet because these inputs 1, 0, 2 and 3 are still uh, behind the first uh, row of registers, so they are still behind these registers. They will cr cross these registers on the first clock edge, so on cycle 1, these values 1, 0, 2 and 3 will cross these registers. They will then become available as inputs to the adders, to the two adders, and they will calculate uh, the two adders will calculate their sum and therefore at the end of the first cycle, in cycle 1, at points add 1 and add 2, we will have the summation of 1 plus 0, which gives us 1, and the summation of 2 plus 3, which gives us 5. So we will have 1 and 5 ready at add 1. So as soon as the first clock edge came, data crossed these first registers and then they will manage they manage to go through the first adders they will take some delay of course because we didn't yet talk about how long each clock cycle should be but they take some time and they are ready at nodes add one and add two before the second clock edge comes and so add one and add two have been calculated now at the same clock edge at clock edge one the rubbish values that were in add one and add two will pass on to the multiplier m and will become input values here and they will calculate trash values as well and the trash value in m1 will go to apps one and will calculate the trash value and the trash value in apps one will calculate the trash value in square one now on on cycle two the inputs minus one and two and minus one and three will then go to adders add 1 and add 2, and they will calculate the sums 1 and 2. 
Simultaneously, the two uh, outputs from the adders, the 1 and the 5, will actually now go to M1 because we have a second clock cycle that allows them to cross this second um, column of registers. And so the multiplier will multiply these two numbers and we will finally have a reasonable value here or a meaningful value here. But still, these two are calculating rubbish values. On the third clock edge, the, uh, these inputs will become available to the adders. So the adders will calculate 2 and 2. But these values, which were the outputs of the adders on the previous cycle, will pass the second column of registers and will go to M1, which will calculate their product as 2. But this 5 from the multiplier will also cross this register and go to the apps circuit, which will calculate absolute value of 5, which is 5. The square uh, circuit is still calculating rubbish. On the fourth clock edge, these inputs will become available to the adders, calculating zero, calculating sorry, one and zero. While these inputs will become available to the multiplier, calculating an output of four. This two will go to the absolute circuit, calculating two, and this five will go to the square circuit, calculating twenty-five. So we can continue this way. For example, uh, on the fifth. Uh, cycle, the adders will calculate 6 and minus 6. The multiplier will take the uh, previous 1 and 0 and multiply them together to calculate a 0. The absolute circuit will take the 4 from the previous cycle and calculate 4. And the square circuit will take this 2 and calculate its square. On the sixth cycle, we will calculate the sum of 3 plus 2 and 1 plus 1. We will calculate the multiplication of 6 by minus 6 and we calculate the absolute of 0 and the square of 4. On the seventh cycle, we don't know what the inputs are. We have not provided inputs for, for this cycle, but we know that at add 1 and add 2, we are adding 0 to 0 and 1 to 1. We are also calculating the product of 5 multiplied by 2. We are calculating the absolute value of minus 36 and the square value of 0. For the 8th cycle, we still don't know, we have not provided any new inputs, which means that add 1 and add 2 will start to calculate rubbish values. Multiply 1 will multiply 2 by 0. Multi absolute 1 will calculate the absolute value of 10, and the square circuit will calculate 36 square. On the 9th cycle, the rubbish starts to feed in, and we have rubbish outputs from add 1 going to multiply 1. Absolute 1 will calculate the absolute value of 0. Square will calculate the square value of 10. And on the 10th cycle, we will calculate only the square value of 0, and everybody else will have rubbish values. So what's happening here is that, is that on every clock cycle, we are shifting data in by one step. So data is shifting in through the registers, and it's going from one combinational block to the next, it's going like a heartbeat, a systolic heartbeat. It's very regular, which is why registers are really helpful. And also notice that when we input 1 and 0 and 2 and 3, we expect an output of 25 in return. Because 2 plus 3 is uh, 5 and 1 plus 0 is 1. When we multiply them by each other, we get 5 and their square value is 25. But for these inputs, we got the 25 four cycles later. This is called latency. So latency can be defined as one of two things. It's the number of clock cycles that go between a specific input being provided to the circuit and the specific output that has to do with this input being available at the output. So if you input something specific, you will get an output corresponding to it after four clock cycles or after whatever the latency is of the circuit. However, after we have filled the pipeline, i.e. after the latency, we will get a meaningful output every clock cycle. This is called the throughput. So in the next video, we will understand that the main value of using registers in synchronous pipelines is that it increases the throughput of the circuit.